The, uh, the last budget announced the creation of a jobs training program, but it doesn't exist. It would be federal money that currently is already being granted to the provinces for the provinces to run job training and to revise the program to have it be a federal only jobs grant program would require the provinces to negotiate the change and none of the provinces want to negotiate the change because they have programs of job training and they don't want to lose them. We, uh, as taxpayers of this country, spent $2.5 million advertising the job training program that doesn't exist. So we see all these ads on TV. Uh, I'd rather we spent money, if we want to have jobs and job training, there's an $11 million budget in uh, Social Development and Human Resources Canada. So that's now Jason Kenney's department. In 2013, they had $11 million to advertise what they're doing to create jobs, within which $2.5 million was spent advertising a program that doesn't exist. The Advertising Council of Canada found that this was fraudulent advertising, but they didn't even find the government because the ads by that point had been withdrawn. So that's what's going on. Meanwhile, the, the, level, the, the, the job situation in Canada is concerning. Job growth is at least sluggish. We did come out of the 2008 financial crisis better than many other countries, but we're not seeing job growth in the way that one would have hoped. We're still at about a persistent 7.2% national unemployment rate, but very worrying is youth unemployment, and that's at 14%. So there are jobs, there are people out there who want jobs, but the number of people who are being brought into Canada in what I regard as a very exploitative program, it's exploitative of foreign workers because they're brought here, but they don't have any rights to stay or to accumulate any rights, and they can only work for one employer. So if that one employer is in any way cutting corners, or you're not going to get a whistleblower, such as at the XL beef plant in Alberta, the one that had the, the uh, E. coli outbreak. That plant was using workers primarily from Senegal, and each worker on an assembly line, uh, they each did one cut at a carcass, so it's a moving conveyor belt. They had 300 carcasses an hour, and they were supposed to make the cut, wash the knife in between, and then make another cut. These workers from Senegal, if any of them had had the, the guts to say, we can't operate this assembly line in a, in a sanitary fashion because 300 carcasses an hour is too many and we just can't keep it up and we're not washing our knives in between and we've gone to the authorities to tell them. Well, that worker wouldn't have the option to go find another job in Alberta because their contract to come to Canada as a temporary foreign worker is exclusively to that employer. So that's why you don't get you know, So it breaks down a lot of the trust that one would have of the frontline workers and what they're going to say about something. So to back up the temporary foreign workers program, I was astonished to find that in December of last year, so I, I don't have a good statistic for December 2013, but in December 2012, there were more than 344,000 temporary foreign workers in Canada. That's a lot of people when you've got 14% youth unemployment. So I, I think the jobs creation issue is a big one. The misuse of government money for advertising is yet another big issue. And the misuse of government money, taxpayers' dollars for advertising for programs that don't exist is yet another issue. And none of them are acceptable. Thank you for raising it.